Hi, and welcome to my channel. I am Katrina Sargent, the owner and creator of Devil Doll Custom Creations. Today, we are going to be doing a fun tri-split tumbler, but with a twist. Partially hydro-dipped and partially decorated with Crafty Thriven's Clear Cast. To start off, you're going to need a sanded and prepped tumbler. That means you have sanded your stainless steel and have spray painted it a base color. I am doing a 20 ounce skinny, so my length is 8 inches. My first top part is going to be the top 4 inches. My divided line is going to be 1 inch, so that means my bottom is 3. You're going to take a pencil and mark on that 5 inch line all the way across your tumbler, then you're going to tape along those marks you made. This is just giving you your first line for your epoxy and your chunky color. I have warmed my tumbler up with a heat gun so that the epoxy goes on nice and smooth. If you're glittering with the epoxy, you want a very, very little amount of epoxy. I'm barely putting any on my gloved hands and running it along to make sure there's no Spots that don't have epoxy, make sure there's no lines in your epoxy before you glitter. Now you're just going to sprinkle your glitter along your epoxy tumbler. Keep in mind you might have to do a couple coats to get full coverage. Once you have the coverage you're happy with, you are going to remove the tape and take a little bit of wax paper into your hand and pat down your chunky glitter. Chunky glitter tends to stick up. This will save you from doing a massive amount of coats of epoxy later. Just brush off any extras, lay any flat, run your finger along the top edge. I have taped off the tumbler right underneath the glitter. I have sealed it twice and I have added a coat of quick coat. Once that is dry, I am going to epoxy over the chunky glitter. Glitter absorbs epoxy. You're gonna need more on this coat than your next coat. I am using Countercultures Fast Set for this step. Just make sure you're getting every part of the tumbler coated. Since it is chunky, you do tend to have to use a lot more than you would for fine glitter. Here I am using 20 milliliters. So that's 10 of part A and part B facet. Since it is facet, you kind of have to work quickly. So as soon as I get it on, I hit it with my heat gun to get the epoxy moving and rolling to give the glass-like finish. If you have any spillover, go ahead and wipe it up with a baby wipe. And then I'm going to torch it very, very fast and then remove my tape almost instantly. Once the epoxy has cured fully, you'll move on to your tacket section. So now we are just going to work on the bottom section since the top is done for right now. I use Tacket. I use 60% to 40% water. It's your choice what if you want 50-50 people do. So here I am just going to tape along my glitter line basically. It gives you just a little bit extra wiggle room in case your brush goes over that line. Tea strainer is optional but very nice. You're gonna need a large brush, your tacket. I have pre-mixed it. If you do this, make sure you mix it up very well. The glue and the water tends to separate. You're gonna take your large brush and I kinda of just lather it on. And then once it's fully coated, I start removing some. You wanna make sure you don't have any streaks or heavy pieces, heavy lines that have more you're not going to get the beautiful finish if you do. I just run my brush on the top down to the bottom. The bottom is the hardest part. 
to get a smooth streak list application. I'm impatient, so I hit mine with the heat gun. You do not have to do this. You can let set it off to the side for 20 minutes. Now you put your ultra fine halographic glitter in your tea strainer if you're using that and cover your entire tumbler. Make sure it is fully covered. Any spot that doesn't have glitter, it's gonna show later. Tap off the extras and put that back in the jar. Now you're going to take a clean hand and just slowly do circles over your glitter. The tacket lets the glitter reposition and lays flat. That's how you get the holographic colors coming through the glitter. You can keep on going all the way around. Don't go up and down or side to side. Go kind of in a circular motion. Um, I found that's easiest. You don't have as much lines that can pop up. And also I found with doing it 60 tacket to 40 water, I can kind of be a little bit more rough on it. I can work the glitter a little bit more. When I was doing 50-50, I tend to have streaks and lines pop up because I didn't have a very gentle hand. I obviously overwork my glitter. So the stickier tacket, helps me. You can find whichever one works best for you and just keep going over your glitter. You want to stay somewhat gentle. You can pull your glitter completely off the tacket if you are not careful. If you find a spot that's not fully covered, you can pull more glitter into it and try to rub it flat that way. That's why you want a full coverage of your glitter. Don't forget to do your bottoms. If you have any angles or edges on your bottom, be gentle with these. Those can pull up the easiest. Once you're happy with how it looks, remove your tape. You're going to then run your hand along the edges. Sometimes it kind of pulls up at the edge. You're going to do two coats of clear glaze and then a full coat of quick coat. I forgot to record epoxy. You're going to epoxy as normal. Once that epoxy is fully cured, you're going to tape off your divided, chunky section you're leaving. This is an inch wide painter's tape. My divided line is one inch, so it works perfectly. You want to make sure it is along your tacket line and on, along your chunky top line. I dog ear my tapes so it's easier to remove later. And just make sure it's a good contact with the bottom and the top. Then take some saran wrap if you'd like, cling wrap. Um, and I wrap the bottom that you don't want hydro dipped with it. I then take another piece of tape and I'll run it along the edge. Since this is the top half that's hydro dipped, I usually dip from the bottom up. I have a old lid that has a crack in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off, put it in a um, plastic bag. The top facing up, you're going to just grab it and twist it around so it's nice and snug along the edges. 
And then you're going to just tuck that all that extra into the tumbler when you put the lid back on. This will help it from getting any paint inside the tumbler. So now your top is closed. Your bottom has tape and saran wrap over it. Make sure you shake up your paints really well before you add them to the water. You drop a few drops of paint right next to the water surface. I wanted a mostly black, so I did a quite a bit of black in this. Just do a couple drops at a time. I usually go dark to light, but you can go whichever way you want. Once you have the colors you want in there, you I take a kebab skewer and kind of make a design on the water surface. Once I'm happy with the look that it's going, I then add colorless and that adds the breakup of the paints where you can see the glitter from underneath in those sections. Before you dip, make sure you run your stick to the edge of your bucket and then you're going to hydro dip, twisting the tumbler slowly as you submerge it into the water. Once it's submerged to the place you want it, shake off any extras so you don't get any paint going back on your tumbler when you pull it back out of the water. Now I'm going to take it over and blow it off with my compressor to get any of the water droplets off the tumbler. Once you're happy with it and it's dry a little bit, you just remove your tape, remove your lid, if you have any bleed over, just take a rag with some acetone on it and it wipes right off. I let my dip sit overnight before I go on to the next step. Next step is the clear cast section. I'm going to be doing now the bottom half I tacked it. This is clear cast from Crafty Thriving LLC. I'm just measuring my bottom section of my tumbler. And I'll be cutting out a strip of the clear cast in that dimensions. I like a little overhang over the bottom. You don't have to do that. You can cut it to the edge. It's your choice. Once you know the size of clear cast you're wanting, you just take a ruler and mark off the height and width. Make sure you pay attention to the direction the clear cast is going so you don't cut out a piece that's the pattern is going vertical when you want it horizontal or vice versa. Now we're going to move on to applying the clear cast onto your tumbler. This is where you're going to see which side you liked your best of your dip. Once you find your perfect side, you're then going to flip it and have the seam on the back half of that. You can spray your tumbler with a little bit of soapy water in a spray bottle. This just helps the clear cast be repositionable, unlike pattern vinyl. You're going to remove the backing of your clear cast. You're going to see it's tinted, but it is transparent. So this clear cast, not white cast. White cast would be opaque. Spray your vinyl to get it started if you'd like. The best thing about clear cast is it's repositionable. Once you put it down, you can take it back up without running the pattern. It is slightly stretchy. You can maneuver it so much easier than pattern vinyl. Once you have your clear cast where you would like it, you need to remove that water that you put between your tumbler and the clear cast. The silicone makeup brush works perfect for that. You also can rem remove your clear cast again, readjust if you find a bubble, if you need to reposition your 
pattern. It's perfect for that. So then I'm just going to kind of overlap the back edge. I will trim that off with a craft knife once I am finished with the bottom. So I take a craft knife and kind of knock out the bottom in little triangles and fold those edges over. I cover my bottoms with metallic or patterned vinyl. So you won't actually see that. To then take your exacto knife or craft knife and slice down that edge. Go around the glitter edge. I didn't get a video of me doing my quick coat, but I always add a layer of quick coat between my epoxy layers. It gives it a perfect finish. Here I am adding about 15 milliliters. So that's 7.5 of each part, A and B. You're just making sure those edges around your divided line is nice and smooth. So you can go on to the next step, which is the vinyl. Once that is cured, you can create your vinyl strips. I am in Silhouette Studio. I just make a rectangle, pull it down to the length of my page, and then I move it into the size I would like. I am doing a double line on this one, so I will have one larger and one smaller to go over the top. I will color them so it's easier to see which is which. Then I just drag it over to make sure I like the width of each and how they look on top of each other. Once that is done, I just duplicate the bottom layer by holding the Alt key. This is a little extra. I spaced mine correctly before I send it. If you need to change your media, change your media on your settings before you send. Do the exact same thing with your top color. I am taking my bottom black vinyl strip and I am going to run it along my divided line. This is just glossy vinyl, so you can't pull it as much as you can metallics or patterns. However, you want to keep it somewhat taut and just lay it along that edge. If you need to take it off and get another one, that's why I cut out extras when I cut out lines. Once you are back to the starting position, I kind of run my nail along the edge of the top vinyl to where it meets the bottom vinyl. Once you kind of have a ridge, you can take your craft knife and slice it right perfectly in the middle. And then you're just going to finish doing this on both lines and then your top line the exact same way. And keep in mind, I tend to start where my line of my clear cast was on the back of my tumbler, so it's all going to be facing the back. I let my vinyl sit for a couple hours to adhere to the tumbler, and then I add a quick coat. You want to make sure you get the vinyl really well so it doesn't pill up. Metallic vinyl sometimes you get a tendency of micro bubbles. This helps that tremendously. Plus make sure you get the bottom really well where epoxy tends to pull up. And your final coat of epoxy. This is roughly 20 milliliters. So that'd be 10 A and 10 B. I am using CC DIY Artist Resin. At this stage, Fast Set is not intended for your final coat. Remember to go slowly, not on this fast forward motion. 
make sure every part of the tumbler is covered. Since this is artist resin, I let it spin for about 15 minutes before I hit it with my heat gun. And then about 15 minutes after that, I hit it with my torch to pop any micro bubbles I might see. If this is not a perfect coat, you repeat this process. Isn't she beautiful? Thank you for watching and please remember to like, share, and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you are notified anytime I post a new Tumblr tutorial. Thank you very much.